Pied oyster catchers are found right around the Australian coast. They favour ocean and estuary beaches with a secondary preference for rocky shorelines. Pieds coexist with the closely related, all black, sooty oyster catcher, but these prefer rocky shorelines. It's estimated that the total population of pied oyster catchers is only about 7,000 individuals. Since Australia has around 37,000 kilometres of coastline, this equates, on average, to around 5 kilometres of coast to support each bird, or 10 kilometres to support a breeding pair. It's one of those intriguing little mysteries of ornithology that the species was scientifically described and named way back in 1817 by the prolific French ornithologist Louis-Jean-Pierre Vialot, a full three decades before European science even noticed the more numerous sooty oyster catcher. Sooty and pied oyster catchers are an example of divergent evolution. They developed from a common ancestor but became separate species as they diverged to specialise in different habitats within the tidal zone. Sooties are the rocky foreshore specialists, tending to forage more on hard shelled prey although female sooties have a significant preference for soft-body prey when it's available. Both sexes of the pied oyster catcher, by contrast, favour soft-bodied prey found on sandy beaches and muddy estuaries, small bivalve mollusks, and invertebrates like crabs, marine worms and sandhoppers. It's long been pointed out that the name oyster catcher is a misnomer. Oyster catchers almost never catch oysters. But the behavioural repertoire of birds can often surprise. Here's a pair of pied oyster catchers actually feasting on oysters, small, weak-shelled rock oysters growing on a reef of soft rock. And amazingly, they don't mind wading in up to their chests and getting their heads underwater. In years of watching sooty oyster catchers, I've never seen them do anything like this. Pied oyster catchers nest in the open on sand, shell grit or shingle just above high water mark on beaches, sandbars and the margins of estuaries and lagoons, which makes the species vulnerable to human recreation pressure, foxes, feral cats and uncontrolled domestic dogs. But although the total population is only around 7,000 individuals, the species is regarded as secure by the federal government and all state governments except New South Wales where it's classified as endangered. <laughs>